Hello and welcome to the South Korea Pickup Pervert Podcast. Today I'm joined with a very special guest who I'm proud to be presenting, uh, Keither Sutherland himself. <laughs> and uh, I'll be your host today. You may know me better as uh, Keither lovingly refers to me as Mr. A-Hole. Um, <laughs> so let's get right into the bullshit. Let's uh, cut the brass tacks and all that. Um, you just got back from a big trip and you got uh, you got corona, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I did get tested twice and both came up negative, but was really, really sick for about a week after coming back. God damn. You know, uh, Musk, Elon Musk just got tested uh, four times. So you're mm. behind, you know, you're behind <laughs> the, uh, the mark. Um, but I do want to get right into this because everyone's going to, you know, be bored with uh, your talk about Corona. You did have a good trip, though, right? It was a good trip. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, Turkey is really unique, really different than anywhere else I've been. I've been to about, I don't know, about 25 countries so far, and that was one of the more unique, you know, really, really different than any other countries. So definitely would recommend to check it out. Sick, sick. Yeah, 27 for me. I'm beating you, but uh, remember, <laughs> I'm like I'm like four months older than you, I think, so so it works. <laughs> you catch up. Um, yeah, you got, you got some time. You got some time to, to yeah. fucking beat me out. Uh, okay. So today I really want to do a, uh, an interview with uh, the man himself. Mm -hmm. I figured that this would be kind of interesting because, you know, you get on here, you do these interviews with different guys, and the last time we did something together, it really fucking sucked, and there was nothing prepared for it, and we had to stand out in the rain and record something. <laughs> and you know my personality of, I don't want to be handing out this shit that I worked for years on on my own to some assholes that can just sit behind the computer board, not put in any effort, and be able to go out and, oh, well, now I know what to do, which they're not going to do fucking anything in the first place anyway. So mm -hmm. I never really wanted to join these things or be a part of any of this. But recently, in the last month, I've met up with a few of the, the dudes from your clique, and it's just hard. It's hard to see you know some of these guys go through some of the mental bullshit that uh, I know I myself quite consistently go through mm -hmm. and then i see and that all of the, all the guys that you know think that you don't go through and yet i know you have too but it's mm -hmm. different when you're coming from not being a fucking coach of the pervert pickup artistry itself <laughs> uh so it's different when you're you know you're you're on your own you're a dude you're just doing your own thing trying to work and make it through life day by day i guess mm -hmm. um but I wanted to give these guys an idea of who you are, how I've known you for such a long time. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then also, I feel like I did want to make uh, something quite a bit better than what we put out the last time because, you know, there are some nice guys out there that really deserve uh, nice guys. I'm sure that's what they refer to themselves as too. <laughs> um, they deserve a little bit more help. And it's like if they can just get their fucking head out of the gutter, they can – they could do better. They really could do better. And I mean, mm -hmm. I could be in the same place too. And it's not, you know, I got my head on my shoulders 24 seven. Hell no. I just mm -hmm. went through a month of hell myself and had to pull myself out of a retarded retardation basically. Um, mm -hmm. But for today, I'm going to be interviewing you for the first time on your own uh, show, I guess. And mm -hmm. I think, I think my recording sound is actually coming through much better than yours. So I think it's uh it's much more fitting as I'm the uh the interviewer. You're the interviewee. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Okay. So uh how I really wanted to ask you this. How did you start off? How did you get started in doing this? Going out, hitting the streets, hitting up girls and making your way. Yeah, so in college, basically, you know, I kind of grew up in high school being pretty shy i remember being like really embarrassed in front of girls when i was like uh you know freshman sophomore year really like timid almost like scared when i would see you know attractive girl and everything like that and um it wasn't really until like later high school slash early like first year of college i kind of started like breaking out of that shell trying to meet new people you know not even girls just being social joining up like college clubs and going to parties and stuff and trying to push my comfort zone because I really felt like 
almost like I was in a shell, almost like, uh, I don't know, almost like stifled nonstop when I was in groups or around certain kind of people, right? And so it took a lot of just like basic social experience, being around people, getting used to that, getting kind of slightly comfortable with that. And uh, yeah, being a man, I mean, fucking horny nonstop, right? <laughs> Especially like 19, 20, 21. Um, at the time, I didn't know there was anything called game or fucking pickup or whatever they call it, right? But um, I would just go out. I would see like attract attractive girls here or there on the bus or like even on campus. And I didn't really know what to say. So I just maybe ask a question or some kind of indirect bullshit. And uh, even back then, very now and then, very infrequently... And uh, I was just kind of stumbling around, but very infrequently I'd have like, I'd meet a girl and maybe go on a date, maybe bang, uh, did meet some like girlfriends even that way. But it was very like sparse and very confused, right? I didn't have any sort of system about it or any any understanding, very just random, um, random kind of results, right? And then it wasn't until I moved to Korea about 10 years ago where I come here and coming from the city that I was in in America and you were in as well. And then coming to Korea, it was like a day and night difference. You had so many, the volume of people just on the street was insane. And uh, just the amount of like attractive girls that you would hook up with, like you just walk on the street and like, oh yeah, half of them are, you know, at least approachable compared to where I was at, right? And so just it sort of kind of opened the gateway to fucking going out there and just approaching and, you know, trying to get this area handled. And then finally found out later about... Uh, really terrible book, right? That book called The Game. I remember hearing about this shit and uh, I read it. It was almost like comedy, right? Like cheesy and corny, weird and shit like that. But the one interesting thing about it was, oh, there are people who actually are doing what I'm doing and, you know, trying to learn, trying to improve, trying to, you know, analyze what they're doing. So I thought that was interesting. And then really the main videos it was like some rsd stuff i watched that uh, i think you were the one you showed me some like youtube's a long time ago some rsd stuff and then the paul jenka stuff you know and uh watching those videos and even just getting some really basic you know fundamental ideas about approaching and just some sort of inner game concepts that really helped me to start you know yeah um <clears throat> now that you mentioned some of that i'm gonna have to throw in there the how i met Keither himself mm -hmm. all those years back mm -hmm. and i think you know the story pretty well too mm -hmm. um he actually really came off as a to to me in my eyes uh kind of a party college guy and kind of a little bit outgoing more than other college guys in general and i was the it was fucking hard as shit to break out of my shell and be, even be able to talk to anybody but uh I knew it kind of like the only way to, you know, date and meet girls and be able to even have sex here and there would be to, you know, be a little bit more active. And I had met a cute girl and uh, she was fucking me off with not being able to like fuck her um, and mm -hmm. just, just screwing me around for months on end. As you know, the story from mm -hmm. long ago finally ended up making that work out but uh of all things she introduced me to <laughs> keith himself and uh and oh my the debauchery then began uh she would have right. no idea that you know the kind of shenanigans we ended up getting into together and it's funny because <laughs> it's like you know that didn't last with me and her all that long mm -hmm. uh but still it's like all these years later i still know you it's mm -hmm. a long time. It's been a long time, huh? Like 13 years, I think, right? Yeah, roughly seven ish. God. Yeah, 2007. So about yeah, 13 yeah, yeah, definitely years. 2007. Even possibly 2006. Mm. I don't want to put age on myself here, but I because yeah. I graduated uh, mid 2008, early 2008, or something like that, and mm -hmm. then I left. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I met you a good year before that, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was a. Uh, it was very different because like, you know, when a girl that you're seeing introduces another guy, like who the mm -hmm. fuck is this faggot? Like, who the <laughs> fuck is this ass? Right. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to hit this piece over here, you know, mm -hmm. slow your roll motherfucker. That's what I'm thinking. Right. She keeps saying, Oh no, he's, he's really nice and he's really fun and everything. You got to meet this guy. I'm like, fuck this asshole. Fuck this little <laughs> bitch. And I meet him and, and, and first thing he shoots me off with is like, Oh, uh, 
you know Chunking Express. Oh, you know uh, Wong Kar Wai. Oh, you know these other these other cool films and this all the other artsy shit and th- mm-hmm. this and that music that we were both into. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow, yeah, dude's a, dude's a bit cool. All right, he's all right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't even know if we exchanged numbers back then at that point. Mm. I copped your copped your digits, um, <laughs> but it was just very funny. So that was one thing. Uh, <clears throat> Next, I really did want to ask you about uh, what was the big difference? What I would say the breaking point mm-hmm. for when you started really taking this shit seriously. And I think just about every guy has that. I can cons- very clearly remember my breaking point where it was basically like, this is enough. I didn't know what game was or that mm-hmm. you know you could basically do and i still don't think game is the fucking right term for this but it's basically taking it seriously that you're really going to go out and put an effort towards going forward and meeting new girls and having some relationships having some constant flow of uh sexual encounters consistently Mm -hmm. and not being a little fucking faggoty bitch about it when mm. was the breaking point for you where you said enough is enough? I'm gonna actually put in some fucking straight up effort, and I don't give a fuck if I get turned down constantly, left or right. I'm gonna keep going forward. Yeah, I remember back in the day, like results being very sparse. Like I'd meet a girl and date her for a while when I was first starting out, and then it would be like a month in between or two months in between sometimes before anything else happened after that. And so then, like I said, you know, going over some YouTube videos and really trying to like try this out on my own and everything. And um, really the breaking point that I remember is going out like I would schedule times after work or even before work where, okay, I'm going to go out like an hour before work or finish work, maybe hit it up for like two hours and see what happens. Right. And uh, I just remember like several days in a row where I would go out and I would do like one approach or zero and uh, I just remember seeing all these attractive girls and all these girls I wish I could be dating or could be talking to or whatever, right? And uh, I remember just going home several days in a row, not just one, but it was like, I just kept adding up like one after the other, after the other, and just going home and feeling extremely frustrated. Like I want to hit my fucking head on the wall, right? Because I made a plan to do something and then I went out and tried to do it and then I didn't execute it. And then it's like, it's almost like being haunted by like these chicks. Oh, man, I wish I could have approached that chick. And it's almost just being burnt by the whole process of like setting out to do something, not doing it. And then on top of that, feeling like, you know, I should be talking to these girls or I should have these kind of girls around. Right. And I just remember feeling so frustrated that uh, there was one day I remember it was something you had mentioned a long time ago, like, oh, you got to go out and just go out for like eight hours or like try 50 approaches or something like that like 30 sort of push 30 or something yeah it was some high number at the time but i remember saying like i should push it to 50 or something like that one day and so there's just i remember going out one day specifically and uh and the goal was like yeah i'm just gonna i can't go home until i hit 50 and i actually did it i actually did 50 right and um i just remember feeling like wow fucking really broke through like you know, I can actually approach these chicks. And after, obviously, after like the 20th or the 30th, the approach, it becomes so much easier, right? And um, just sort of like reaching these mental realizations that it was just me standing in my way. It's like getting out of your own way, going out there and actually executing it, kind of getting into the flow a little bit. And then I remember that like out of that one day, I'd spent like all these days, right, previously, doing one two approaches or like nothing walking on the street for two hours and doing nothing and going home and just being really frustrated right but that one specific day i remember i got like several dates out of that and then out of that i got like a few bangs out of that and then out of that a couple regs right out of just one day you know and so i just realized like all it takes is like one really like hardcore intense day to really start getting things going instead of just you know put it you know dipping your toes in the water and you know talking about tomorrow it's going to be the day tomorrow's going to be the day you really just got to jump in jump in the swimming pool right yeah and i think one of the biggest things that uh the homosexuals listening to the uh to this uh podcast Mm -hmm. right now need to really understand and get through their head the big point that you're mentioning here is that you went through this 
you know, you're up in your head worrying about, oh, I, I didn't hit up this one. I could have done that. Oh, this is so frustrating. You walk around and walk around. Your fucking feet are sore. Hours go by. You didn't do anything. Oh, how about that one? Ah, I just let that one go. On to the next one. Oh, she's going in someplace. And you make these constant excuses and then you become even better and more clever about making the next excuse for the next one. Mm -hmm. And you, you finally break through that and you do your own thing and you're happy with yourself. And like you even said, like sometimes it's your first day coming off of that kind of bullshit. You're just so hyped. You're in just such a good mood that mm. even just this first single day, you do great. You bang from that day, you get regs, the numbers are solid, things are good. Mm -hmm. And why was that day in the beginning so good, but then later on it's not as good? Well, that can kind of happen at some points, but mm -hmm. one of the bigger things is you went through that at that time, right? Mm -hmm. But since then, there hasn't been times like that that much, right? Mm -hmm. That's because right. of fucking momentum. These guys that I've met that I've even hang, hung out with them a few times and talked to, it's this fucking momentum. It's not riding a bike. If you don't do it for a while, you really fall back. You mm -hmm. get super rusty, or as mm -hmm. what I like to call it, the rust bucket. <laughs> when I'm when right. I'm fucking when I'm fucking rust bucket over here and I'm I'm shooting air, you know, like you like uh, playing basketball, but all you're doing is fucking shooting air, and that mm -hmm. shit happens to me, happens mm -hmm. to me a great deal because I'll be out of it for a while and then I have to work my way back in, and I've done this many times, and I could have had the results that I've had before and all these amazing wild things, and it's like I fucking did that or that happened, that was real. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. That's real. Why is it so hard to even do a single approach today? Mm. You really have to get the fucking momentum going. It is yeah. super fucking key. Mm -hmm. And sitting around and worrying about the next one or, oh, the next day or letting it go and everything, it's just like putting yourself 10 steps back. Get yeah, in exactly. the fucking mode where you're going to be doing this. And I know we've had this conversation back and forth where you say, yeah, sometimes all you need is the first one to start off the day and like you're ready to go. And I somewhat disagree with that i have my own mm -hmm. methods of like starting the day out and how i move into it and it's it's also funny because i've talked with other guys and they're like oh yeah is this the trick that makes the day start off really good to where then you have a good day and then from <laughs> there it's always no it's actually like what works one day then you try that again later it doesn't work anymore it's like drugs mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah coke is real fucking exciting the first time but then when you do it like 10 times later, it's like, yeah, you're still chasing that first time high. It's right. not going to work the same again. So mm -hmm. there's other things that you got to work on. And it's like, yeah, doing this on my own years and years now of like, I'm not a coach like you and I don't mm -hmm. have constant like momentum of watching guys, being with other guys. It's me having to be out on my own 99% of the time and mm -hmm. having to say, get off your fucking ass and get to this. Or mm -hmm. else you're just going to be upset with yourself and then actually go, go back and take off. Uh, like recently, like I basically took off maybe three years about three years about not really hitting it up strong. And mm -hmm. it would be like, you know, time in between the reg where I'd have time away from her. She'd be out of the city and everything. And like literally straight up, like I have one day. Oh, shit. I'm going to hit up whatever girl in Starbucks. <laughs> and I could, I could make something happen with that because it's that excitement in the moment. That you're right. able to feel in the moment and that gets you through and it's like oh now this reg is gone from me and i have all this fucking time if i made this happen before in a single fucking day and even a single try like why is it not happening now how can i not even get myself to approach but getting mm -hmm. through a lot of the, uh, the mental bullshit uh, so many guys mm -hmm. end up dealing with that but um talking about your being in this uh in this position that you're in which is a uh what would you call it? A coach, a, a mentor, yeah. a, <laughs> what, what would this be exactly? What are you? Who the fuck what are am you? I? Who are you? I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm non-binary, non-conforming. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I refer to my, yeah. my pronouns are Zed and Zim. Okay, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm an alien though. Um, yeah, just a dating coach, you know, like mentorship, leadership training, dating That's... coach, I guess you'd call it, right? That's so fucking cheesy. Dating coach? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How about a coach how to not be a faggot anymore? <laughs> Basically, in the yeah. end, in the end. In politically incorrect terms, yeah. Yeah, 
I would have to say that you are not really a dating coach per se at all because in the end like you're it some guys you're teaching them how to date but some guys you're teaching them how to get totally different goals right mm -hmm. some guys that's don't true want too. dates some guys want some quick one night stands and that's it and sure so, sure yeah you do end up working a lot on that and stuff and what's mm -hmm. funny with dating is like yeah, dating and sex go hand in hand. And if you're not having sex, you're not really fucking dating. So <laughs> right, exactly. You exactly. need to lock, you know, girlfriends and dating in by um, what I refer to as uh, interracial intercourse. That's what, <laughs> that's what you tend to have out here in South Korea if you're a foreigner and they are not. Right, um, exactly. So, so about the <clears throat> coaching that you have done, um, mm -hmm. what would be maybe one or two of the biggest uh most common problems you see over all these years you've been doing this you've been doing this for like about four years now right yeah three or four uh-huh mm -hmm. and i remember when you first started this off it was just so silly that you're going to be doing this kind of thing like really and then like yeah a lot of guys were actually interested in it mm -hmm. and things have gone it's like snowball. It's been this big snowball effect. And you've ended up working with a ton of fucking guys. Mm -hmm. It would be really hard, I'm sure, even for you to count right now. I have no fucking idea how many. More than 30 to 50 to 100? Something like that. But I know you do more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. little group things. But uh, And all the guys that you've had, here's the question. Here we are. Um, what are the you know maybe most common one or two problems that you see? the most mm, i would say okay probably leadership like so being assertive and being a leader i would say is probably like the most lacking thing so you know they'll have approach anxiety and they'll be passive and afraid to approach right that's the biggest thing for a beginner right just actually going and doing it and then once they actually start doing it it's like they expect the girl to like lead the conversation and to make things happen right like, oh, I said hi, and then I'm just expecting her to say everything back or sort of like asking questions and falling into this like, you know, not not actually taking the burden of the interaction and leading it and making it, making it a good time and making something happen out of it, right? So I would say, yeah, leadership, you know, is definitely a big thing uh, that a lot of the guys are lacking. And then another thing is sort of, uh, I would say probably another big problem is like getting guys to read social cues or read the situation, right? So you might have guys that are maybe assertive, maybe they're good at like leading, but they're very bad at sort of reading the situation, right? So developing some sort of intelligence about how to read the situation, how to read the girl's reactions or emotional cues or body language, right? So a lot of it I would say comes down to like body language issues with the guys themselves and them being leaders and then also reading the girl's body language and reading the situation itself right so basic basically social awareness social intelligence yep yeah yeah i oh i was listening to every last bit of that i did not break the interview to go to the bathroom for a second not at all um <laughs> you were talking about women and guys meeting women and then how to do that yeah that's that's a good topic too. <laughs> right um <Yeah. clears throat> As for uh, one or two of the most common things that I see with guys mm -hmm. that I've met that are trying to get into this, uh, the the constant fucking Band-Aid approach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, uh, I think we mentioned this the other day, too, when we were talking. Um, they basically try to be their own doctor and prescribe their own... Uh, <clears throat> uh, medicine for mm -hmm. whatever the fuck they think is wrong with them which it's basically mm -hmm. like oh what is this tactic or this trick that w that's game it's game i'm gaming this girl and i'm gonna trick her into fucking being interested in me exactly um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and exactly and so i that's, don't have to mm -hmm. i don't have to go out and actually do a lot of fucking approaches and put myself through the fucking grinder and do all these things that i'm uncomfortable with how do i just step into it so it's like so it works. So it's easy. And I think one of the biggest worst things is mm -hmm. most guys come to you as a coach mm -hmm. so that they can get the easy route. 
so that they can right, like, right. sidestep the the learning process or the learning curve. And it's funny because it's like, yeah, I, I did boot camps several times too. Mm -hmm. But I did boot camps after I'd like researched a lot about the guys and like seen their content and stuff and had right. put it to use for months and months and months. I'd already been doing it for just about a year myself and had had plenty of results. And my idea was I'm going out there to hang out with these guys and meet up with them and basically say thanks for all the fucking advice that I got. And I want to mm -hmm. show them how fucking great my shit is now. Like I'm popping mm -hmm. shit off left and right here, mm -hmm. um, which I did pop shit off left and right. And I <laughs> burnt those motherfuckers out of the water, showed them up <laughs> in, in their own city, in their own country, in their own club. Right. To take right. that, take that guys. Um, well, that's but, a but, common, you, you bring up a good point is that a lot of guys are looking for some sort of like special line or some trick or tactic. But if anything, like the way that I coach and the way that I wrote the ebook that I wrote, uh, which you can get on the website, pickupkorea.com slash ebook, right? Um, nice I treat it more. Nice marketing, dude. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug here. But uh, the way I think about it, it's more of a journey or more of a process of personal alchemy, right? So every guy sort of has. You know, every guy has sort of a savage or a leader or a strong masculine side, and then they have the more passive, feminine, being a pussy, bitching outside, right? And then every guy has the more caring and understanding side, and then the side that they're just socially retarded, right? So it's sort of, you know, the way I look at it is each client is different, each guy has a different personality, different strengths, di different weaknesses, and sort of you have to kind of kind of swing, help them to swing the pendulum in a certain direction, right? So if it's leadership, you know, give them challenges, give them advice, give them feedback, how to be a stronger leader, how to be more assertive, right? Other guys have other issues. They they talk very, another very, very common issue, actually, you're talking about common issues, is a lot of guys are just very bland. They're very vanilla. They're very uninspiring, right? Like they're talk, they talk to the girl kind of like, they're t I don't know, like they're talking about mathematics or something. It's like very, you know, so what do you do here and what are you doing in this bookstore it's and, just very uninspiring very unengaging right yeah. and so like helping guys to be better communicators to be more expressive to have feeling behind what they're saying to actually talk about shit that they're interested in or that's worth talking about you know or at least talking in a way that's you know commands attention at least at the very least fucking exactly i'd say the other issue that they don't realize that they have after they're done with their diagnosis and trying to band-aid their bullet wound basically um <clears throat> is is this uh it really comes down to the girl is not really that interested because what the fuck does she have to be interested about mm. at, at the same on the same token you can't really sit there and be worried like am i interesting is this going to be interesting you just got to right. be having fun yourself and be happy yourself. And if she fucks you off, hey, fuck off, girl. Then you lost one. Hey, you mm -hmm. could have had a good time. Too bad. I'm moving right along. Mm -hmm. It should be more of that mentality where it's it's so often I've seen so many guys come around with. They're so dull and so bland <laughs> and so shitty while they're in set. It's like no wonder the fucking girl's walking away. But then you're asking her for a number. No wonder it's going to not work out. No wonder she's going to flake you off. Like she has no real reason to be wanting to hang out with you anyway. And then you come back from that situation. You go, oh, what could I have done? Would, would there have been a phrase? Would there have been like, what, what kind of joke could I have added into that? It's like you add these little band-aids on top of a shitty personality. Yeah, exactly. When it exactly. should be, I'm going out and like, okay, that interaction just went shitty. I know I can do better than that. I know I can be more interesting than that and more relaxed and more fun. And I can do better the next one. Not just mm -hmm. like, what's the one little like phrase that I could have added on that. I would have, mm -hmm. I would have volume spiked her. Is, is that what it's called? It's a fucking volume spike. I don't know these. <laughs> I don't know. I don't terms. know. Yeah. <laughs> strawberry, strawberry fields and shit like that. Oh God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some of these old fucking pickup terminology things, just hilarious, which is, again, yeah. it's more of these, these band-aid <laughs> tactics of like, yeah, hide your shit personality behind all this other silly shit. If you were ever able to do that, how long is that shit really going to last? Do you think you're going to hold down a reg seriously from that? You're going to be the guy that like, 
is two weeks down the road, you've met and fucked a few times, and then she just deads you in texts. And that's the good side of it. Exactly. If she doesn't do that, she's already fucking another guy, and then meets up with you, and then asks you for the abortion fee. Okay? <laughs> hey, been there, done that. You don't want to be that dude, okay? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so cool, cool. Moving right along. Uh, are there any breakthrough things you've seen guys do that make a big change overnight? Mm, okay, breakthrough things. Um, I would say the biggest thing, really, for most guys is, like, playing to win. So sometimes on the program, uh, during one of the modules, it'll be, like, the burn the boats mission where, no, you're not taking phone numbers. You're not sticking in these useless sets and stuff like that, right? Like, just going out there with the goal to meet a girl, have a good interaction, and then push it as far as you can take it, right? Kind of bite off more than you think you can chew, go for, you know, swing for the fences, so to speak, right? And so oftentimes it's in those where it's like the guys realize like, holy shit, I'm stopping up, you know, I'm um, not really going for it. I'm kind of one foot in, one foot out, ending it early, going for the number, or like just not really pushing things as far as they can, right? And so then when you give them these little missions like this and uh, you see the guy approach, you know, handful of chicks, and then you, you meet that one who's like available, the vibe's good, and then just instantly pulling her to a uh, bouncing for like a drink, going to a venue, right? And then just going for the straight up going, pulling her home, right? And uh, do they all work out? No, of course. I mean, it's not all going to work out, but pretty much like every program that I coach, there is like one of those days where the dude pulls a girl home. And, and it goes down, right? And then it just blows their mind, like, holy shit, like, how many other times were there situations exactly the same hmm. where I didn't even, you know, I just bailed out to get a number because I was afraid to push it forward or even just didn't even approach in that situation, which it was a good situation to approach in, right? So it sort of opens up their eyes to reality and to the social matrix, so to speak, right? So those are, those are like, really key breakthrough moments that I see happen. Fuck yeah, good shit. Especially, mm -hmm. it's like, yes, that is so key. And if guys could do that. And I could also see that, like, sadly, you could tell guys right now in this podcast thing that uh, that is a big thing to do. Just fucking really go for it. And it's so funny that, yeah, 99% of guys really won't be so solid about doing that. And yet they do that when they're on a program with you. And they have a coach standing behind them going, don't be a faggot anymore. <laughs> do this shit seriously. And then once they really commit and they really do it and they have a mind bending experience and they go, mm -hmm. fuck this, I can do more. There is more that's possible out there. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, even for me to do that to myself and make me make myself do things that I thought were fucking wild at the time. Mm -hmm. Once I finally started pushing boundaries and stuff like, yeah, it was it was definitely a big, big change that way. Other, mm -hmm. other than that, for myself, I would say uh, big overnight kind of changes that I've, I've just seen or, or making a, just a huge leap in a very short amount of time, which is be like beginning of one week, I'm doing this kind of silly shit. And by the end of the week, I'm doing way better. It's, mm -hmm. it's been what you used to make fun of me for, uh, my demon finder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, why don't you explain that a little bit, what, what that is? Yeah, yeah. So you'd go out and make little notes about like what problems keep coming up. Like what are you fucking up on or like what are these issues that keep coming up, right? And so you you make a little list of these things and then make sure to eliminate them or cut cut them the fuck out as much as possible each subsequent session that you went out, right? Yeah, I mean it would be it would be at times of like, okay, today these things are going to be cut out. I cannot do this fucking shit anymore. And sometimes I'd have to like go home at night and say like, where are results really coming from? How are things getting better? How are sets getting better? What am I why are these ones going better and these ones fucking silly and stupid? Oh, here's some things that I consistently do that are silly and fucking stupid. Okay, X that shit the fuck out from tomorrow. No more of that. No more of that. And that really does help. But sometimes it's as clear as day as like, oh, wow, in the last couple of sets, I did this. For the next three, I'm absolutely not going to fucking do it. It doesn't matter what the fucking outcome is or getting blown off or not. 
I'm going to not do this same stupid fucking thing again and again, which sometimes it's something like uh, my transition didn't go well from the very first thing that I say to just going into a transition into, the, into another topic. And like, mm-hmm. oh, the transition was fucking clunky and shitty. And that alone will just kill a set, absolutely kill a set and kill most all sets. And especially mm-hmm. with, you know, cute girls that are fucking busy and in the middle yep. of a run down the street trying to get the, la- the, the next train or, or whatever it is, or, uh, or get into a place to meet their friend and trying to yep. hold them up for five more seconds and getting that five seconds to turn into now they're texting their friend that, that oh, can't make it today. You know, right? It comes yeah, the window to, is very sh- the window is very uh, short. You got to make so it happen often, quick. Yeah, and it comes yeah. down to a good fucking transition that's fluid and comfortable. And it's still that mm-hmm. could, that could be really one of the hard things. But like knowing that, like, okay, I'm gonna just go for a fucking good transition and really be focusing on that. So yeah, mm-hmm. having a demon finder. Uh, you know, when I don't have a coach around me helping me and telling me what the fuck to do, I have to be my own coach and mm-hmm. stuff. And so that's been really, really, really key. Um, okay, going right along. Uh, <clears throat> how are the guys that have been uh, really good, mm-hmm. how are they different? The guys that you've coached that have been, you know, just amazing, just above and beyond everything else that you've seen, what was mm-hmm. different about them? Okay, so there's definitely some similarities between the guys that got, like, really, really like some guys got like such good results that even blew my mind, right? And so, a couple of things that I noticed. Number one is uh, this sounds very trivial or like common sense, right? But when you're paying a coach or somebody to help you with something, and they fucking tell you to do something, then you fucking do it. You don't say, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't play pick and choose, right? So a lot of guys when they, you know, hire somebody, a consultant or a coach. Or let's say even personal trainer, right? Okay, I'm going to go hire a personal trainer for a month. Yeah, yeah, I like the gym part of lifting, but I just want to eat Krispy Kreme. You know, just give me the sick lifts. But their diet is Krispy Kreme, Coca-Cola, fucking whatever. The most unhealthy shit, right? They're not following the protein and veggies or whatever the diet that the trainer gives them, right? So a lot of times, a lot of guys, they think that they can still do bullshit and then just pick and choose the advice that they want, right? So all the best guys that I ever coached basically followed everything that I did or that I told them to do, the missions, the challenges, the feedback. They followed it pretty much to the T, right? And uh, I remember there's like one guy, this is like more earlier on, just getting these crazy fucking good results, right? Super fucking hot chicks, models, Miss Korea contestants. This is like all in a month, right? These like fucking room salon chicks and all the, you know, Girls that work at Samsung, just a wider range of these super hot chicks. And then, like, they would ask him, so how'd you do it? And he was like, I just followed everything you told me to do to the T. Like, every fucking exact thing. And just did it on, you know, not only during the sessions, but then also on the off days too, right? And so, like, that really is one major thing is just following the advice fully and fully committing to it, right? And, um, yeah, another thing I would say is, like, one thing is being more of an active thinker, like guys who are, you know, maybe that they ran a business or maybe they, you know, had to manage something or I don't know, you know, they've been in those situations where they have to think on their feet and be in, be engaging, right? Those people do pretty good because they are used to having to problem solve, right? Where I notice with guys where it's sort of like, I don't know, maybe the <laughs> Maybe they got daddy's money or, you know, welfare checks or, you know, another thing could be an, in- an easy English teaching job where you don't ever have to think for yourself. The things like that can really hold a lot of guys back because they're just sort of in the passenger seat throughout life. And then finally in this area, like, oh, now you're in the driver's seat. Now you have to think on your feet. Now you have to solve problems. You have to overcome objections. You have to make shit happen. Whereas in the rest of their life, they're not doing that at all. So you you know you're going from being in the passenger seat to all of a sudden getting thrown in the driver's seat and having to make critical decisions, right? So yeah, I've noticed that yeah definitely you know entrepreneurs or the, you don't even have to be a businessman like a lot of guys I coach just you know they uh, they take the burden of the situation into their own hands and they're very 
they take responsibility and they make a choice and learn from it, right? And then kind of analyze it, get the feedback, and apply it next time. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think one of the most uh, interesting things that, uh, I mean, this is funny because I've got to see it from an outside perspective of when you first started doing this and first started working with guys and then work with several different types of guys and tell me all these different stories throughout all all the years. And it's always kind of like, oh, yeah, this fucking, you know, I, I got laid this weekend, but, oh, you got to hear this uh, this student's fucking shit. Oh, uh, and you tell me all these kind of funny things or whatever. Mm -hmm. A very consistent thing that kept coming up, and we've talked at end on this, is from day one when you talk to a new student or a prospective new client and he's interested in taking your thing, and we both know this to just be true a hundred times over, when they start the conversation with, yeah, uh, I know about your stuff and it's really interesting, I really want to take it, but hey, you know, can I get a discount? Right from yeah. the fucking start, I, 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 and I was very much like, and, and I know you gave a couple of discounts when, right when you first started. Yeah, way back because, earlier. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. people didn't, you didn't have any kind of background or anything. And I told you mm -hmm. from the beginning, like, oh, fuck these discount people, fuck them. <laughs> and then you right. learned right away too that like they are the yeah. worst, worst students. The people mm -hmm. that ask for a discount, then you end up like having to baby them along, and they pick and choose all the things that they want to do. And yep. then they're bitching and complaining, well, I just did that set and why didn't she like me? Why didn't it work? Mm -hmm. And it's literally so fucking ridiculous. And, I'd mm -hmm. ha and I'd tr I've tried to even say to uh, some of the guys that I have met, it's like, you know, you ask for a discount when you buy something that's a commodity. Okay? Right. When you're buying something that's a commodity and you buy it from one place, you buy it from another, it's the exact same thing. When you pay for a fucking service, can you imagine the level of service that when you start up, start the relationship and it's starting off on the wrong foot and this guy already has a nasty attitude? It's like, I've seen you be really, really nice and really baby some of these guys and I can't mm -hmm. fucking believe it. And I would never be able to do that myself, especially with this kind of a thing where it's something that I've had to work and go through the pain and suffering that it takes to make this shit work and then try mm -hmm. to hand it off nicely on a fucking on a golden spoon on, on yeah. a silver serve it up on a silver platter to assholes like that it's like no 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 wonder it's not working for you and it's because you don't deserve it either but you don't start off a relationship with someone who's going to be your coach and someone who's going to change your life and hopefully get you these results that you are dying for and what you really need because obviously you're not happy with what you have right now. And you're going to start that off with, yeah, but let me get a discount. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, off. exactly. I mean, and that's, yeah, I that's learned so that much lesson. My, that's so much my attitude and opinion. And we've asked. No, it's like, true. But I learned I had to learn that lesson early on. So, yeah. yeah. Very true. When you've asked me yeah. to do other things, even such as like, oh, just just a simple fashion consulting, or uh, or even going full extent to like doing straight up a program for someone, and any kind of talk about like, if they even mention discount, tell them I'm not doing it at all. <laughs> just just yeah. fucking say I'm not available. Don't give them my contact info. Not not at all in any way. Mm -hmm. it's just more bullshit that it's like yeah you don't want to be around these people and why would you want good results for them if right. they're assholes I, of mm -hmm. course the girls don't want to put them inside their body if they're acting like this and that's what they're asking for so right well even even when a guy asks for a discount or like oh can i make a payment or something like that like half up front and then half later or something i think that they think that they are you know, in their mind, they're like trying to get leverage or get a sick deal or save money or something like that. But what they fail to realize is they're actually just it's not even me like, OK, what, a few hundred bucks or whatever. It doesn't make or break me. Right. But it's more what it does to them. They're less mentally invested. It's the same guys who are less likely to follow the advice, less likely to put in the effort. Right. Because they're not, you know, the whole mindset started out from one foot in, one foot out. And so that's what you see in their approaches. That's what you see with the follow through. And so, you know, it's like they think they're getting one over, but actually all they're doing is shooting themselves in the foot at the end of the day, right? Fucking exactly. And we've mm -hmm. talked about that topic at length too. And mm -hmm. that really consistently happens over and over again of every time that this kind of situations come up, 
they end up not following through with what they, they should do, really bitching out during the program, really not coming through w- with whatever. And it can be anything from excuses of like, oh, I just don't really have the money to do this. And I've seen other guys that you have coached and they didn't have shit for money and they came up with it. They figured it yep. out. They got it somewhere. They made it exactly. happen because they knew it was fucking important and they didn't give a shit about like, oh, I need to discount this. It's like, you're going to try to discount my time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just doesn't work that way. And in the end, it comes down to the idea like, oh yeah, I'm going to hold this over this guy, half of the, the next part of the payment. And by that, like he has to get me some good results. No, you're not going to be doing it for yourself. And you're going to be half-assing it the whole way through. And you're going to mm-hmm. fuck yourself over, which is where I focus on something completely different, which is where when we start off, there's all this punishment and pain that you're going to have to take and that you're going to get Unless you follow through, it's not even just going to be the payment. It's like, here's this list of the litany of horrors that you're going to go through if you don't actually follow through. And Mm -hmm. even having that much more of a leverage of get your ass moving, I find it works so much better. And even I have to do it to myself too. If I do Mm -hmm. this or just fuck up the day and don't follow through with what I was going to do, I've made many many a punishments for my own self. And Mm. it's that kind of thing that really gets me to you know, put a fire under my own ass to make sure I get things done and to end up where I want to be. Mm-hmm. Just, exactly. just so that I don't feel bad about myself too. Mm-hmm. Can't say, oh, I'm this person, you know, I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not who I want to be. It's, it's having some self-respect too. So uh, sure. I thought in a way we break from uh, the last couple of questions and we go into some questions, open a mailbag here. I asked mm-hmm. some of the homeboys for some, uh, some interesting questions, and uh, I, I think I got some some fun ones along the way. Uh, so if you don't mind getting into that, uh, I'm going to start off with the most simple and basic. And I find it so funny that one question asked by one, how can we say viewer, mm-hmm. <laughs> was uh, was the actual the exact opposite of what another one asked. But okay. question mm-hmm. one, how to build comfort? I I, I asked these guys. They could ask you anything, all kinds of like, you know, super secret stuff that maybe they've been, you know, embarrassed to talk about or they forgot about or they should be doing this on their own for several months now to the point where, you know, other topics really come up. They want to learn about something new. But uh, the questions were a bit sparse. There were some that came in, but uh, the first one being (laughs) how to build comfort. Okay, how to build comfort. Okay, so the first step would be be comfortable yourself. Right. So the question you should probably ask yourself is, are you comfortable in these situations? And if not, how can you be more relaxed or comfortable? Right. So it's sort of like the old school back in the day, like RSD had that concept. I think they called it the law of state transference. Right. So whatever you're feeling, other people around you feel you're exuding this energy right about you. And so most of the time people are asking that it's because they're not comfortable in the situation. And it's more of a matter of you know, maybe is it through approaching more chicks or, you know, is it through um, just gaining more experience? Is it through maybe not, (laughs) not coming in like too creepy, like way leaning in and, you know, encroaching on these people, like approaching people in a more laid back, comfortable way, right? Talking about body language, um, you know, the way you position your body, the way you talk, things like this, right? Like a lot of guys will talk very, uh, what would be the term for it, for that? Like very jittery or very like weird or very quiet, like cl- quiet. Okay. That's another problem. Yeah. Quiet or like very clowny and entertaining and it's not comfortable. It's just kind of corny. Right. And so like, you know, t- talking in a way that you are relaxed and that you it makes you feel good and then also makes them feel you know, more likely to feel comfortable around you too. So that that's very important, I would say. Um, yeah, I think uh, specifically mm-hmm. on this topic, as we can easily move over it because uh, a lot of the other things come into the same kind of, can be this, answered the same way, even though they're a completely different question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really think it's like, if you're going to ask this here to uh, Keith or Sutherland himself, if you didn't have him around to ask this question, how would you ask it to yourself? How to build a comfort? It's like you're asking it the wrong way. You're thinking of it the wrong way. 
you could even think of it in a better way of like, why am I not making her comfortable? Why is she not comfortable around me? What am I, what the fuck am I doing that's fucking so weird? And just even mm -hmm. by asking that, you can start pointing out little things like, oh, I'm kind of doing this or I'm doing like that. And like someone who is comfortable or a situation that I can see that is comfortable. And I'm not saying watch other pickup guys. I'm saying watch other girls hang out with their other girlfriends. And why are they having such a good time? And they're laughing and, and they're enjoying things. But then you can't come up and make that kind of thing happen too. I've found that I've learned so much more game, gamey tactics, not even about game, but how to have interactions with girls and how to have relationships by watching other people in life and how they interact with each other. One of the biggest mm. teachers that I ever had was just watching like how a grandmother interacted with her five-year-old granddaughter mm. and just watching them hang out and play together. Mm. And yet, there's so much more that you could actually learn from that than trying to think like, what are the tactics to game this person, to make them right. feel and trick them into being in this lulled comfort state where I can get what I want. Instead, yeah. just like, yeah, it should just be normal. It should just be mm -hmm. fine. I mean, there's mm -hmm. how many billions of people on this uh, earth right now? They all came from what? From having the sex. So <laughs> it's not like it doesn't exist. It's a normal part of life. Stop making it into something that's not. So right. anyway, I would say majority of guys like don't think to even ask themselves the right questions. Yeah. And by not doing that, they don't think in the right way. Right. And they can't come up with their own answers to solve their own issues. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. On to the next question. Um, <clears throat> I sent you over the list of questions, right? It's just that you have it. Mm -hmm. Do you have it in front of you? Um, have it in my email. Hold on. Okay, these, these questions are very long and <laughs> drawn out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go over the first one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip it out to where it's uh, real mm -hmm. short. So okay. question, I want to learn how to set a strong man to woman frame as opposed to friendly guy frame uh, right off the open. What advice would you give to solve the issue uh, within one or two weeks? So a short, <laughs> so a short okay. period of time. How could you solve this issue of I want to be man to woman right off the right off the frame, right set the frame right from right off the bat? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a funny question, right? And I, I like the how it's like qualified with within one or two weeks, like like there's a trick and then it just solves it in seventy two hours or something like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny question, pretty funny question. Um, but I understand what they're trying to ask, you know, you know, maybe they're coming off too friendly or like weak or something like that. Right. And so I would say the main thing is with guys who are coming off too friendly and chatty and stuff like that, I would say the main thing is like leaving more pauses in the conversation. And also it really, it's comes down again to the basics, the sub the body language, so are you like jumping around jittery and ha 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 ha, like breaking the tension every time? Or are you kind of calm, relaxed? You can look her in the eyes in a flirtatious way, like she's a woman, not like you're talking to a door or some shit, right? And um, yeah, kind of squaring up with her uh, and not being afraid for it to be, for there to be sort of silences or tensions, right? Not, not, uh, having to think that you have to entertain her or, you know, be overly like, oh, what do you like? Being very like, the main problem is that, that too, right? Like a lot of guys are like seeking rapport every time and trying to find all these connections where they're not, right? Like, oh, I like, uh, I like the Toic Test too. Oh, you live in Kong? I do too. It's this very, you know, they think they're like winning them over by, basically being a con man instead of just be whatever you know yeah it's you know almost i gotta yeah. i gotta interrupt you there with uh remember back in the day we did a little mm -hmm. challenge we'd go out and we hit the streets and the opener mm -hmm. was we we did this wild shit all the time mm -hmm. of uh the most the stupidest fucking openers we could think of just to be just because it was fun for us mm -hmm. and then you ask these guys to do uh, something uncomfortable and like oh i can't do that but our opener for that day was hey you have iphone <laughs> I have iPhone too. Oh right. Right, right, <laughs> the right. Stupidest fucking thing. And yet how many times did it work so well? Exactly. It just exactly. As well as any other opener. 
know? yeah because you can say whatever i mean at the end of the day it just comes down to how are you coming off what's your you know you're able to control yourself and your eye contact the body language you're able to pull, pull things back change topics you know so yeah you can actually start at like a deficit and then pull it back up right <laughs> That's Absolutely. pretty fun. And, and it's pretty... so much of uh, what uh -huh. I used to talk about back in the day is I would start these days, these dates off at a deficit. And I would mm -hmm. make sure the walk from the subway station to the cafe, I would make sure that was clunky and uncomfortable and stupid so that I would set the bar really low. And then it would be so easy to move up from there and then build up a quick vibe within the cafe and then move to a place to go eat and have a drink and get things going a lot faster by instead being great and amazing right from the start so much more of the time you run into the uh you do this all the time you must meet girls like this all the time and then you got to play it off with yeah whatever yeah maybe mm -hmm. it, fucking who cares? who gives a shit you come to my place or not anyway so obviously yes so chill out mm -hmm. let's let's keep this moving um but yeah right. for a while there uh, that was one of my things that i i like to do for quite a while and just like started off uncomfortable and kind of stupid right from the beginning of the date which like oh god i'm gonna have to spend two hours with this fucking guy and within 15 minutes we're having a couple of laughs within 30 mm -hmm. minutes it's real fun and she's really enjoying it, mm -hmm. and it just exactly made things, by slowing down it makes things work faster um exactly exactly to, to this point too uh i think i'm going to get into this exact same topic again with these other questions but it's kind of like uh the idea with the one or two weeks to solve this problem, what I find funny with that is when you have problems and real issues, you know, sometimes you can just solve them within a few fucking approaches. You just stop yeah. making the errors. You just say, I'm cutting this bullshit out and you stop doing the thing. So what is the thing that you're doing? Well, if you're being too friendly or too, you're not being man to woman, what can be funny about that is, is you see other guys doing their thing in the way that they are and you're good at some other shit. And they're not that way. And that's just mm -hmm. not part of your personality. And then you're going to try to be who you are, but then also like take on the, the attributes they have and mm -hmm. do that successfully. It's like, that's just not who you are. Why not stick to fucking the way that you do things? I mean, the way that you th do things yourself, Keither, mm -hmm. and the way that I do, the a-hole himself, mm -hmm. we are actually really fucking different. Mm -hmm. when we're in with chicks and, and, and stuff. And I've introduced you to several of my regs and some of them really love you and think that you're so funny and everything. But so often they're, they're like, yeah, but I would never fucking date a guy like that. Like I could see <laughs> how other guy, girls could be into him, but totally not my type. And it, it is funny. We, we both end up getting pretty different girls in mm -hmm. the end. We both mm -hmm. end up like having pretty different regs, like personality wise and stuff too. And it, it is more just like, you will find people that are more towards your personality. There's, there's not a huge amount that you do need to change. Not that often, but I do see a lot of guys asking questions of like, how do I really become this completely different person where it's, it can sometimes be like, how can you just take what you already have and tweak it a little bit and make it just a little bit better to where it works mm. that much more for you rather than try to be something completely different. Yeah, exactly. Most of the time, it's not adding on shit. It's more stopping doing shit, you know? Yeah. So I've seen even myself, like, maybe there's some new things that I want to take on, and it doesn't happen in one or two weeks. I remember one specific thing. It took four to seven months of really grinding it out. My results were real shit, mm -hmm. but it took me a really long time to really add this in. And then once I did it correctly, things were so much better. Other little mm -hmm. fixes that I've made and other changes that I've made, I mean, it's it's pretty quick. It's, you know, it really just happens very quickly. But the one thing, before I move on to the very next thing, the one thing mm -hmm. that I, I had changed that was really hard for me was uh, I did do a boot camp with someone. I already had, you know, plenty of things happening for me. And he said the one thing that I could change that would move me up a bit more and really improve my own shit is be more retarded. Mm, yeah, that's and good advice. It was it was actually a little weird and uh, very clunky at first. Yeah, for the first four to seven months, and I say four months because literally my results dipped to about half of what they were. Then they, you know, got a bit better, but it was only until about about seven months in of where not only did I really take it on, but then it it really did improve everything that I did, 
and now yeah it's part of like it, it is a thing of like yeah it, it helps to be very uh to come off smart and stuff mm-hmm. is can be way worse and to be more retarded really really does help and so yeah I, yeah I, I, a lot of, i fully yeah. embodied it now i mean i sound like mm-hmm. a fucking retard and uh <laughs> i've taken it on completely and sure whatever People view me yeah, that major way. issue is guys, they take themselves so seriously, Oof. you know, so it's, um, that, that's definitely one thing that I've seen a lot is they take themselves so seriously where it's more like the guys that are good at this, they, they can tease themselves and be silly with themselves and be silly in the situation. And it really just shows that they're comfortable in their own skin and it allows the girl to feel comfortable around you rather than this dude who's stiff and takes himself so seriously in the fucking street or in the Starbucks. Because, oh, yeah. you know, I'm getting a latte. It's so serious. Right? Oh, yeah, of course. I remember yeah. one of the uh, one of the uh, big things that I noticed uh, was when I fully took on the, the retard person- persona. I uh-huh. decided to go with uh, full-on five-year-old behavior. And I was on a date with this girl. So, and I stop in the middle of whatever conversation she's having or when she pauses and I go, so like, so what's your favorite color? <laughs> and then she, she says fucking whatever. And I go, nah, nah, that's not a good one. Orange. Yeah. Orange is definitely the best. Oh, that's pretty and, funny. And then Just being an idiot. I, yeah. I, I literally go from that to, yeah, anyway, my place is over here. Let's go in there for a bit. No, oh, that's pretty funny. It was a good one. It was a good one. Then I started adding on to like, uh, stupid shit like uh i don't know what i want to be when i grow up you know i used to always kind of think like astronaut but you know maybe cowboy or fireman and stuff like that's pretty cool too you know how about you (laughs) i mean just not taking yes not taking it seriously a lot of them really love and laugh at that kind of stuff and so many girls have not gotten the joke but the attitude and demeanor that you say it in like oh okay he likes that other things that i say like they might ask st- stupid questions that I really don't like. Like, oh, what, what are your hobbies and stuff? Like, what mm-hmm. a kind of a fucking ridiculous question. Like, you're really going to get to know who I am by that, and then you, you want to have intercourse with me by finding that out? And my very common answer is usually, usually like, oh, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know coloring? You know color books? You like color books? Mm-hmm. I bought some uh, really good, like, high-level coloring books at uh, Kelvo Mungo. It's really mm-hmm. hard to stay in the lines, but I'm getting better at that these days. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I might start uh-huh. selling that shit pretty soon. I don't know. It's hard <laughs> to part with it at this point. And uh, right, yeah. Again, not being too serious about it. Moving right along, the next question: uh, attraction. When you keither other girls, when you keither open girls, mm, uh, you create a very high level of attraction just by chatting. Uh, even if it's just a five minute open, I've seen you do it not even in five minutes. You could literally say five seconds to 10 seconds. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen you do that. Uh, question is basically, how do you do that? How do you have a attraction? How do you set that kind of attraction? Okay. So I think the first thing is to actually feel attracted to the chick yourself. So one thing that like before I approach a girl, this is like one thing that I tell the students here and there, but one thing that I'm doing is that I'm looking at the chick and like focusing on something that I like about her that makes me feel excited, that makes me feel, you know, sexually attracted, sexual chemistry, right? And so when you go in with that kind of energy that you feel, you know, fucking into it, right? Then it it kind of exudes off of you, right? Where I see a lot of guys where they go in and it's sort of this, it's like, are they even into the girl or I don't, you know, it's this very, uh, do you know where the Starbucks is? It's a very uninspired, very unexcited very unengaged you know so I'm, I'm going in with the mindset that i'm fucking into this i see this chick's fucking skirt with the panty outline you know i can see the long legs or whatever it is and um it just makes me feel excited and so i'm going in there with that sort of fresh you know <laughs> sexual attraction feeling it myself and then what do you think the girl feels we went back to earlier that we talked about this earlier when you feel a certain way, it's much easier for the girl to feel that off of you, right? And so going in there with that kind of energy, feeling good about it, and uh, talking in a way that you are interested in what the fuck you're saying is very important, right? If you're talking in this uninspired way, it's very hard to inspire anybody. 
if you're talking in a way that you're interested, <laughs> what, what's that old school saying? You're interested and interesting. I think that was like this old school thing that people would say, like a David D'Angelo quote or something, right? But you go in there excited about the possibility of connecting with this chick. And I don't mean like being overly giddy or like, oh, hoo, 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 this is great. Not that kind of stuff, but just feeling it in your body that you're, you know, that you're into this and kind of seeing where it's going to go. And, uh, yeah, talking in a way, you know, something you notice about her, something that caught your eye and kind of talking about your story, your world in a way that it is interesting because you're living a fucking interesting life or you're off to do something fucking cool. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just coming in with that kind of energy, that kind of vibe, that kind of attraction to the girl and that sort of, you know, just that you're a cool dude going about his day is very important rather than you know, going in there, making it an interview and not feeling attracted to the girl and not talking in a way that's fucking interesting. So not conveying like a range of emotions, right? Not talking, talking sort of monotone is a big issue I see. Or like, like we talked about earlier, everything's too positive, too fighting for rapport, too monotone or too this or too that. But uh, being more fluid in your communication, right? I think that's pretty critical. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things of not just this kind of like instant attraction, which that's a very different topic, but a massive, massive problem that I see so many of these guys have the way that they talk about what the fuck ever they're talking about. It's not <laughs> like they have any kind of energy to it. E energy being like having some excitement about the stupid topic that they're talking about. And I'll do this too all the time in dates, especially on the first dates or in the first conversation when I don't know the girl almost at all or very little uh, and a thing just catches my eye and, uh, and I'll challenge myself to like act like I'm fucking interested in this. Mm -hmm. I don't even give a shit about it. And I'm not, I'm, the words are just coming out of my mouth about this one thing, but I'm, I'm so emotional about it. Like, oh, this thing is so, and then it's kind of more like this. Oh, I hate it when it's like that too. But then mm -hmm. having the kind of feel and the flow about it mm -hmm. shows something different, some kind of interest in, in something where I do see a lot of guys come up and like, oh, you do speak English, right? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't. And I'm, it's hard to find good English speakers where it's more like <laughs> even that topic could be like, God, you seem like you speak good English, but you don't really look like it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then, you know, yeah. like most people say that there's a ton of English speakers out here in Korea. And I was blown away with like, I say this little phrase and like, Oh shit, that's too hard. Like, Oh my God, I really got to slow it down or making one little tiny topic into something much longer to where she needs to interrupt you with, other ideas that she has or disagreements and then you're having a conversation but that's mm -hmm. that's more on the uh the way that you can build attraction through you know long-term conversation rapport but the idea mm -hmm. of like you you're 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 hot and, and they're into it right off the open i would say like yeah i've seen you do this and it's something very different from what i do and i've tried to do this kind of thing the way that you do it the way that i see you do it but it's more of like that's what i go for and i'm trying to do more at night when it's more like it's on the edge and it's like i don't do that so much through the majority of approaches because it's more like let me test it out let me test the vibe i'm gonna come in here on this girl and then uh see where she's at and then play off of it from there and so uh we had talked about before even how uh I made something happen recently within a five minute period, you right. know, and it's like catch an air all fucking day long, but then make something happen super fucking quick. And I wouldn't have done that if she came off with a very different vibe, but I was able to able to step into that really quickly because mm -hmm. I had to test it out first and then go, oh, she's fucking hot to trot. Now I got to step in with the, uh, the Keither way of doing this and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, be on it and stuff. Where mm -hmm. usually I do come up with just, you know, very, oh, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of more slight and sly. And it would definitely come off as, as very, um, what, what are those typical pickup y terms? Like one is aggressive and one is like very. Like indirect or something? Oh, that's indirect. what you guys call it? You call it indirect, direct? Okay. 
<laughs> Something like that, yeah. I thought humans yeah. call it passive and aggressive, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. But I would come off very uh, fucking indirect because I feel like the direct, and I know you get this a lot, you end up getting a lot more blowouts. They No thanks, no get away, when coming mm. in very indirect, it takes them a bit longer to give you a blowout and then that gives you a, a, a little bit more time to at least even like vibe check and see where the mm-hmm. vibe's at. Even I, sometimes I say to myself before I go do an approach, I don't make some va- gay ass excuse of why I shouldn't do it. Instead, I just tell myself, hey, vibe check one, two, one, two. And that, <laughs> I know that means I got to go up and just check where her fucking vibe is at. Maybe she's just going to blow me the fuck off, but maybe she's mm-hmm. actually going to be cool and nice about it. And so often, a good half of the time you're actually surprised with, oh, wow, thought that that would be an instant blowout, yet she was just nice and kind. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. that even if it didn't go anywhere or not, but it totally went beyond my expectations of it just being like, ah, no, fuck off. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's like gotcha. very, very different. But uh, the idea of like every time you need to go in there and grab the attraction, get them, <laughs> get the pussies wet right off the open, nah. Mm-hmm. Nah, you're going to fucking blow yourself out of the water with that. And yeah, you'll find some once in a fucking while that'll be really down for that. But mm-hmm. it's better to really come in there and as as the uh, as the phrase goes, be like water. Mm-hmm. Be able to change with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Find your mm-hmm. stride. Um, next question is a little bit similar to that. I want to move right on to the, uh, the funniest of all. Mm-hmm. Uh, womance. Womance, <laughs> womance, romance. Uh, I've yeah. seen guys like, uh, God, what is his name? Lazarus. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are fluent with what I call womancing, or, or the <laughs> the art of womanceness. Womanese. What the fuck ever. <laughs> uh, this is a this is a funny one though. Uh, their texting is like a magic. Uh, they bypass all logic, and to a casual observer, the conversation looks nonsensical. Yet the girls are eating it up. I let's see. I have to find my fucking space. I'm sure face-to-face conversations are like that too. What are two or three tips to improve one's romanceness? <laughs> okay, um, kind of I, I think question. I'd like to go after this one first. Um, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Kiefer sure. Sutherland. Uh, I think you need to check if you have a vagina, And if you have a vagina, you may need uh, something inside of it. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is, honestly, one guy does one thing his own way, and he can make it work for him. And it's one of the, these situations where if you try to take on someone else's stuff, Sometimes it's not the right thing for you, for the way that you do things. But specifically in this situation, in this situation, this guy really could give two fucks less whether things work out or not. And it's kind of that that ideal situation of he's not worried if the conversation works. He's not worried Mm -hmm. if this opener is going to work on the girl. He's not worried if this is going to be the right thing to say. He doesn't really care if it's going to fucking blow out one way or the other. And that alone... The girls also feel that, but whatever, whatever. And most of the time, they're giving little shit tests with whatever silly bullshit that they're saying. And to them, it's not shit tests. They don't really know what a shit test is or when they're giving a shit test. They're just throwing a little, you know, something a little what should be difficult at you. And when you don't take, you don't take it seriously, you don't worry about it, you don't let it get to you, you pass. Mm -hmm. You move right along. And they let yeah, move exactly. right along too. So, mm-hmm. so much of the time that, that could just be the answer. It really doesn't fucking matter. But then again, with these kinds of conversations, if you're sitting there worried about if the conversation is good or not, then it, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also if you're worried like, oh, if I answer something like this, will she be like, what the fuck do you mean by that? Even in that situation, I'm, I'm sure like, if you're taking this on, this womanceness, as a mm-hmm. uh, as a new tactic, it fails on you the first two or three times, you're not going to know what the fuck to do and you're not going to have any confidence to do it the next time. This guy mm-hmm. does that in every kind of conversation, has done it a thousand fucking times, so he's seen it not work on him. And he's had to work through it a thousand mm-hmm. other times. 
So he knows the other different ways to work through it. So it's go- going to be comfortable f- with it, for him, mm-hmm. you know, with the way that he does things and with his style. So mm-hmm. it's not going to be an issue for him. But when you try to throw something in new and you don't know how to solve the issue of if it doesn't work, then it's going to really blow up in your face that much more. But the real answer to this would just be, I'm sure when some girl brings it up, what the fuck are you saying? Wait, what? Uh, I don't I don't even know. Then his answer is, yeah, but whatever. He just, you know, holds it that much harder. <laughs> right, and then, like, right. and then, then the chick breaks down. And, oh my god, this, this is so crazy. That's silly. Anyway, and then she moves on from it. Then she lets it go. But if you're gonna sit there and worry about it too not working, then that's when it's not gonna work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. your opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, there are some like good elements to take away. Kind of like you're talking about earlier about being a little bit more stupid being a little bit more retarded, being a little bit more irreverent, which is like pretty much everything he's saying in his text, right? Like a lot of guys need to take that on a lot more because as we mentioned earlier, they're a lot more serious, take themselves fucking serious, communicating very black and white, logical. Whereas if you look at girls and how they communicate, go to a fucking cafe, listen to them talk. It's really just ADD nonsense, but... It's more the communication, it's the emotions behind the communication, right? So they'll be like, oh, that fucking Unni at work, what a bitch, fuck her, but oh my god, can you believe fucking Jiho, Opa brought in tiramisu, oh, no more so. It's just very up and down and left and right and positive, negative, happy, fucking angry, jealous, right? And it's the emotions that are communicated, even though it's not really, like, it doesn't really even logically connect a lot of times what they're saying, right? Whereas, like, guys are thinking, like, I say this, and then she says this, and A and B, and A and B. You know, it's very back and forth. But by being a little bit more dumb and communicating in just, like, the sort of range of emotion, sort of how girls are, you know, communicating womanese, I guess this guy calls it. But it's more just being an emotional communicator and being almost like ADD in a way, right? Like, I, I honestly, I think this guy kind of has ADD, too, so that kind of helps. But, um <laughs> but like being sort of that dumb dude with ADD. I think what's uh, what's really yeah. amazing here is the guy that we're talking about. Uh, what's his name again? That fucking asshole. That fucking piece of shit. That <laughs> Lazarus. That, that douchebag. Um, <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker. What's really funny about this guy is he is actually a very, very serious and logical person. And when you hang out and talk with him, he'll make little jokes here and there and everything. But when you hang out and talk with him for a good amount of time. He is very serious and extremely logical, even with the work that he does, mm. 80, 85 to 90% of the time. But then when you mm. see him talk and hang out with girls, it's that other little percentage that he really leans into that much more. Mm-hmm. And it's really funny that it's, it's just so different that way for him, but it, he makes it work. But then again, it's like he's also not sitting there worried about if it's going to work or not. And I think that even for him comes with this very big abundance of there's plenty of numbers in my phone. There's nothing for yeah. me to fucking worry about. I, I, I barely have the time to make time for the dates that I have only on weekends that I can make things happen anyway. So um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by even having those kinds of mentalities, then you're not running after the next one of like, I hope this, this works and I don't want to take another blowout approach when in, in general, it should just be more like, did I solve the issues that I was trying to work on for myself today? Did I do a decent job? And really working on that kind of shit, mm-hmm. things will fall into place. They fall mm-hmm. into place more than, more than not. Um, mm-hmm. Getting back to our last couple of questions uh, about you, about the teaching that you've done, what are some consistent and common results students of yours can hope to achieve by taking this seriously if and do, if and when they do take it seriously after taking the program of yours mm. uh after about six months or uh when they've continued on on their own okay, okay so, so pretty much every guy that i coached ends up getting results during the program like really the vast majority that i've ever coached there's only been like a few people who don't get like late or just crazy massive progress oh, during like, the like the losers. You're talking about the losers. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hey hey hey! Everybody's starting at different starting points, right? So uh, gay gay um, shit. No no, I would say this. I would say this. 
too many people are too fucking uh, focused on fucking results during the, these kinds of programs and boot camps. Really, right, and actually fixing really. the problem. And right? it's like, right. yeah. Uh, even even for me, when I had done those things, it was like, oh, I was really like, oh, trying to kind of show off and do my shit. And it's like, I kind of wasted my own time. If I just worked on fucking worked on me during that, it's like I would see some good results within the next few months, six months, a year. It would have made a mm-hmm. huge difference. And it's like, yeah, you should be focusing on taking shit seriously. But but regardless, um, what are some I, of the I would say the that, results yeah, that, that you have seen mm-hmm. uh, from people that do continue it on their own that do sure. you know keep up with it. Yeah, yeah. So the results should be that they are very comfortable and very experienced, you know, approaching and communicating with girls and under kind of understanding where the girl's coming from, being able to convey themselves properly. And, you know, they know the whole process of just opening, getting a number, figuring out how that works, texting them, going on a date. It just becomes a normal thing. It's not this thing that's a struggle or anything like that just a normal part of your daily life or your week right maybe one or two a week or something and um you know it's uh during the program obviously it's much easier to work on these things and pretty much at the end usually we make kind of like a little roadmap or an assessment so they they walk away at least you know having learned a lot having got some results having changed up a lot of things that needed to be changed or you know kind of finding out their blind spots that they had and then knowing what they need to work on or what to do from here right that's kind of like the last module that we go over the big picture right and so as long as they continue right after the program then they can expect that this isn't really an area they really need to worry about you know they they know what to do and how to do it so all they really have to do is continue to execute right it's not something that it's a big mystery and i don't know why shit's going wrong or anything like that it's more of a matter of staying on top of it right yeah it's great i mean like one of the biggest things that people can really take from this kind of a thing um and when i've done my own too is like it answers so many of the stupid fucking questions that you have in your head that you kind of just have such a weak mind not know how to answer it something as simple as like is this the right way to approach Mm-hmm. Is this the right way or is is this like, is this off? Do, am I making it uncomfortable? Is it awkward? Is it not going to work more often than not? Is this situation a good situation to approach in? Is this uh, a type of girl where, oh, she has the googly eyes and she's really into me and things are on and, and, and it's good? Or is this just a, a flaky fucking number? And mm-hmm. by doing this kind of a thing, you start, yeah, really opening the the opening your own eyes to like, oh, lots of shit is possible. Things can and do happen. And yeah, like you've said before about those days that you take people out and like, hey, it's going all the way tonight. You know, Mm -hmm. we're fucking going for the gold. And so many times they really come away with, uh, there is so much more I left on the table from back in the day. God damn. Exactly. 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 Once they have that reference experience or that realization as long as they follow through with the roadmap that we laid out, you know, as long as they keep going, then, you know, the world is your oyster, so to speak, or whatever that expression is, right? It's like, it's all in your hands, balls in your court, you know the game plan, you just got to go do it. Yeah, and pretty soon the balls might be in her hands. So yeah, I, hopefully, going. right? <laughs> Last question to wrap up, uh, yeah. and I found this one... Uh, pretty interesting and i really wanted to Mm -hmm. uh, get your opinion on this and i don't think we've really ever talked about this um but i know it's the i know it's something that's that that is there it is Mm -hmm. there and does exist with each one of the uh, clients that you've taken on Mm -hmm. what are some of the expectations students clients have before taking your program that are really just not realistic Mm, okay I would say, uh, let's see, there's a handful. I guess one common one is the guy has no idea how to approach, no idea how he's coming off, no idea how the girl's perceiving him or how the girl feels, right? No idea how to run a date, no idea how to be normal on a date, no idea, you know, how to make, how to make it, how to turn the girl on, I guess you would say, or how to build some sort of chemistry, right? But 
he expects to, you know, I just want to be banging these tens and these models and stuff like that. Like, it's, it just sounds ridiculous, right? When I put it that way, it's like, I have no idea how to do marketing. I have no business skills. I have no value proposition. I have no money to invest, but I want a $10 million starting job. It's basically what you're saying, right? So, exactly. So it's, uh, you know, I would say, you know, delusional expectations, I would say, you know, wanting to, you know, like I just said, that that's an example. Another example could be, I think this is way different these days. I remember when I first started, because this whole thing was kind of new, this whole sort of this um, underground soci- sociology, I guess you would call it or something, whatever you want to call these, these social experiments, right? Um, uh, you know. I didn't really have that many expectations. I always knew that I had to fix shit and it might take a long time. It might, some things might be easier to fix or easier to handle. Some things might take years, a year, six months, whatever it is. Right. But, uh, or some things you might need to work even long term, Right. But, uh, I know so a lot of guys these days, they expect like one day, one day out or two days out that it's just going to be all the problems are solved. And, you know, <laughs> Like, like they, they change, change their whole personality, personality in a day, day whereas like, like really this is more of a long term thing, thing that you're committing to, and figuring out and adjusting, adjusting you know, as, as things go. go. It's, it's not like, like you know, trying to give like an analogy. It's sort of like, like uh, you know, I mean, things change every day, situations change every day. You just need to stay on top of it. It's kind of like if you know how to invest, or if you're into stocks or trading or whatever. It's not like I know the exact strategy, so I can just. Go, go out there and throw, throw my money in any stock. That's not how it works. works. Like you, you always have to be on top of it. it. You, you always have to look at the trends or how the market is that day, day right? And, and it's going to be different every day. day. It doesn't start and end the same every day, day right? And, and so, so sort of uh, going in, you know, realizing that life is <laughs> life isn't static. Everything changes, right? Everything's in flux. Everything's in constant evolution and change and you, you know, know just, just realizing that, that not being, being so delusional, delusional I would say is very important. important. Yeah, yeah. Even a- along those lines, uh, one of the biggest things that I've kind of seen from guys over time and a little bit what we mentioned before, and so much of this is like, we kind of have to circle back to almost the same answers, but uh, it's almost like the, the riding a bike mentality. Like once I do this and take this boot camp, and, and it's I've been on these other camps boot camps and shit with uh mm-hmm. when they bring out big groups of fucking guys and i get to take a fucking thing with a bunch of dudes all at the same time and they have a few different instructors and seeing their you know perception of oh what i'm gonna be by the end of this weekend mm-hmm. and and so often it really is this uh ride a bike mentality of like once i learn to ride it then you know problem solved I'll be, you know, having these statistics consistently of like, yeah, I'm not going to be the best, but, you know, one in 10, one in 20, I'm going to mm-hmm. make things happen. And that's going to be my consistent results. And the fucking funniest thing of like, yeah, you take some time off and then you come back into it. And whereas you've gotten to be a little bit better because you've had a reg during some time and you know how to like actually have longer term conversation with someone and that can be a little bit better, you come back in and you can be fucking super rust bucket. Absolutely. And for sure, for sure. Literally starting all over again. I've had this happen to me many times when I come back into taking time off. Um, I have to sit there and fucking make fun of myself, you know, mm-hmm. and step back mm-hmm. from things and really have to, like, go through the grinder again. And yeah. it is exactly. a hard motherfucker. It is a hard motherfucker, but I th- I'd say even... With guys just starting off, that is one of the bigger things. And yet guys that have been in this for a little bit, for a while, and I I can't say like they've been in pickup and game. It's more like, you know, they're a little bit older, so they've dated and they've had sex a few times and they've had different (laughs) girlfriends here and there. But then like, you know, they take some time off. They're busy with their work and their shit for a while. And then they like, hey, time to be single again. I mean, I think it's one of the biggest uh, stats in marriage of uh, when a guy and a girl get divorced, the likelihood of the woman finding another guy is extremely high and mm-hmm. her getting married again. And it's very funny that like guys, after even their very first divorce, never have another relationship the rest of their mm-hmm. life. Yeah. It's huge. Very it's sad. huge. So uh, 
yeah. getting back into it is is another thing in itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, that's just about it. Is there any other wrap up uh, topics that you want to talk about? Maybe oh yeah, the other super secret podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are recording a super secret, super underground fight club. Sick. <laughs> Anyways, a podcast that's not going to be on the public YouTube, right? Not at all. It's going to be a uh, special kind of membership only, only for guys that are interested, only for guys that are serious. And since it's not on a public platform, we can actually talk in a way that's a little bit more how we actually talk when we're together, a little more uncensored. We can cover topics that... Well, a lot more fucking uncensored for me because I only got mm-hmm. to say faggot nine or ten times so far. So, <laughs> no, there's actually there's a lot of things that uh, I don't want to bring up or even talk about yet. If, mm-hmm. it's, uh, if it's part of your crew and some of the guys that I've known and stuff, uh, and, you know, if you say it's right for them, then, uh, then sure, let them have a listen to it. But, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that... Uh, it's more of an interview for you interviewing me this time. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, this time, uh, some of the homeboys can send along questions that uh, you'll be able to ask me um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> for some of the other wild shit. Uh, and yeah, just something quite a bit different. But uh, yeah, something a little bit uh, on, on the down low. Yeah, exactly. And actually, uh, I will put how to get access to that in the uh, description of this podcast. So... You're going to find out how to sign up, how to show that you're interested, and we'll get you on that list to get that uh, super underground, uncensored, uncut podcast. Yeah, exactly. The thing is, this is not going to be a, like a, it's paid and some bullshit like that. you got to pay up money for it. It'll be free, but you have to know the super secret handshake to be able to get it. And if you right. don't, you won't. You know, and this, exactly. so that's where that's some, at. We got some Freemason, New World Order shit right here. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, contact you directly or however you're going to set that up. But uh, yeah, but yeah, send over questions for that. And um, mm-hmm. Also, you mentioned uh, you're, you're thinking about doing this like rust bucket challenge program or something, right? Maybe you can tell me more about it. Well, just something a little bit different for, uh, for specifically the guys that uh, you've taught or guys that have been through this stuff before. They, this is not their first time out. They, they, they've gone through this shit before. I know so many guys that I've met recently when I went out this last month for the first time in quite a while myself, and I've, I've done this over the years. I mean, we've been doing this for quite a few years now, mm. um, but I, I don't have the background like you. I'm not like constantly having students to tutor and teach and deal with this shit and talk about this topic. I don't hang around in these fucking groups at all. So when I'm doing my work and I'm out doing my own thing, I'm there doing that. And then when I'm like, hey, I need to fucking find some new regs. Hey, it's about time. You know, it's been a while. I need to, uh, it's time to get the willy wet. Uh, it's not just that, but it's it's a motherfucker getting back into it. And I can see other guys having such a hard time approaching. And I mean, even for me in the last month, starting off my first couple of days of being like, hey, today was a good day because I did two approaches today. Hey, that's mm-hmm. good. And within a week, mm-hmm. bumping thing up, things up to, you know, having a few pulls and a few lays. And the next week, having some really amazing situational shit that I'd never seen before to, to even the end of the month, like having some really, uh, some really amazing times. I, I think we'll be able to talk about that a little bit more in the next podcast about some yeah. of the details of that. Some of, mm-hmm. some of that being, you know, shit that I can't mention, literally cannot mention on... Uh, on public platforms, <laughs> you know, you know reasons why. Um, not full on rape scenarios. No, no, no. <laughs> that being my old, uh, my old pickup handle, Midnight, <laughs> a- aka the Midnight Rapist. Oh, I always thought that would be like the fucking funniest like pickup handle. Why, why do these guys get these weird cheesy like names and stuff? I always thought like if that would be my name, that would be like mid- the Midnight Rapist. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yet I do, <laughs> yet I do pretty much all my shit during the day, which is. Which is very different, but uh, but anyway, um, yeah, something for guys that really want to get back into this and that got their head basically in a downward spiral and are having a hard time doing this. I've been there fucking before, and I've killed myself going out for a nice 
almost daily three month long stretch of like, why can't I get back to the place that I was before and the kind of like steps that it takes me to go through. And yet it's hard. So much of this is like, yeah, you've got to challenge yourself. You got to put yourself through this and get yourself to where it's not a question anymore. Like I can take some time off and it won't be the end of me. It's not going to be quitting. I can come back months, years later and still get to where that I, where I was before despite all the shit. So something like that for kind of for like returning clients or, or friends that, uh, you know, it's not their first time out. It's not their first rodeo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think for that, yeah, for that, uh, I don't know, uh, contact, contact homeboy, Keith or Sutherland himself. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, yeah it sounds, sounds like a good, good thing. thing. Cause a lot of guys, they, they get, get into it, it they, they take, take a break. break. For, for various reasons, reasons maybe to work, work on their business, business build a business, business maybe because they have a long-term girlfriend or whatever. And, and then, you know, they're doing fine or they're doing, you know, decent, decent perhaps before. And, and then, then just getting into it again is even harder the second time sometimes. So, um, yeah, it is really good that, you know, you can offer something like that. Well, yeah. Especially since you, you just went through it yourself and you had to kind of create a system or figure out how to transition back into it right i've done it a handful of times on my own completely Mm -hmm. going from like okay here's here's the big years back in the day and here's the big things that had happened and then you know taking time off and then locking in regs and just dealing with that for a while and then being like hey you know it's time to refresh the roster which is by the way a fucking phrase i came up with motherfucker I heard you on another <laughs> podcast saying like, oh, I told my friend about Refresh Drop. Damn it. That was that was me back in the day, motherfucker. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, really getting back into this. And I think one of the funniest things is, uh, number one, no guys really stay consistently doing this forever. Realistically, every guy that I've known drops out of this for a while. Literally, you are the only guy. And it's mostly because, you know, we were doing this from back in the day. And then it's slowly transitioned into being your part-time to then full-time career. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, this is not something that you can just basically do 24 hours a day, yet people mm-hmm. in your position tell you, like, you can do it all the time and you should, and it's just not fucking realistic. It just doesn't happen that way. Years right. over years. Well, ultimately, you need to learn how to integrate it into your life, right? Right, sure, that's what happens. No, most people mm-hmm. step out of it for a while. And it's very funny mm-hmm. that uh, I found... One of the old uh, coaches, one of the guys that ran my boot camp, high level uh, homeboy. I think I can just uh-huh. I can say his name. I think it's not a motherfucking big deal. It was the uh, RSD Alex guy. Mm-hmm. Remember him? Remember that yeah. cat? He traveled out to Korea and he's like, "Oh, fucking that dude's here, the a hole himself. I want to meet <laughs> up with that dude. Oh shit!" So we ended up uh, hanging out again, and I had done like a couple of programs with him years before, about like fuck six years or seven years before that. And mm-hmm. seeing him again, he's like, oh, so how things been? How have things been? Have you been fucking keeping up or you, you fell off pretty much like everyone else does? I'm like, no, no, no. You know, I somewhat keep up with it, but it, I'd consider it more like seasonal. At most, I'll mm-hmm. go in for a season. And he's like, damn, that's exactly what I do now. After all these years of doing it, like uh-huh. I'll step out for a season or this or that now that I'm doing other business shit. And then like, hey, it's time to hit it up again. And I think and he said this, I think that's the most natural thing. Like you can't be doing this 24 seven. And when you step mm. out and you step back in, it's easier when you've had a big background in this and it's been part of your life for quite a bit of time. But realistically, yeah, most guys take a program like they do with you, get some results mm. like they do with you. Take you get a, girl, do, get do a another, girlfriend or take time off or whatever. Do yeah. another month, two, three yeah. at most maybe, and then take time off. And it's like, yeah. you know what? You got to step back into it at some point. And it's a, it's a motherfucker. It's even hard, and I know this for myself too, when you've had some results and some big fucking results and some shoes to fill basically, and you're saying like, hey, this was me before. Like, what the fuck? What am I doing Mm -hmm. now? Like, come on, what the fuck? What is this? But uh, yeah, got to start somewhere. So anyway, more more about that, I guess, if you uh, contact Homeboy himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll mention, mention more about that later. Qualified friends and only. Uh, how to apply for that uh, program. And so, yeah, I think this has been pretty good. Pretty nice to sit down and uh, be the one being interviewed this time, right?